Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 513. The topic today is don't sell out for love. Before I get to that, let me, let me introduce myself and also got to drop two pieces of information before I get to that. So first of all, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business and attract the love they truly deserve. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which led to these talks that I've been doing for a couple of years now, almost, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's episode is number 513. The topic today is Don't Sell Up for Love. But before I jump into that, two things. First of all, um, with the news this morning, I just wanted to offer my prayers and, and condolences for those at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Coming from a Jewish family, not bringing myself and having done by the Mitzvah Synagogue, even though I'm not in the Jewish faith as a path for myself at this time in my life. I still have a closeness to that community, in my community, and want to send my love and light to those who were affected by what happened in Pittsburgh this morning. That's one thing. Second thing, changing completely, which is also in some ways really, really related. Um, if you have been following me around for a while, you know that I had a second book just come out on about three weeks ago called Love Revolution. If you happen to be in Los Angeles tonight at 7 p.m., we're doing a book signing. Hang on. This is the book, Love Revolution. Um, 26 of us in the book so there's a few of us going to be there at the Mystic Journey in on in Venice on Abakini Boulevard if you'll join us at 7 p.m. tonight feel free to come and join us and say hi and uh, we'll have fun with the book signing anyway so that's that's the news of the way to the topic at hand welcome by the way to my broadcast this is my daily chat and today is don't don't sell out for love and I've actually got two things going on with this topic because one of them is is the frame about what we choose to give up to be in relationship and two, what we do once we're in a relationship. So I want to cover both sides of this because for some people they go, oh, it's fine, it's fine. It's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> there's, a, there's a belief system floating around the culture. Not everybody, but for some people, that being in a relationship requires you to sacrifice something, to give something up, to um, put up with certain things. A lot of times people say, we can't have everything in a relationship, so you should give something up. Is that really true? Personally, I'm of the belief that you can have what you want in a relationship in the energetic level, meaning that what you can experience and enjoy together. Now, you can't, may not have the physical exact manifestation of the house you live in, the amount of money coming in, and what, the, the street you live on. That may be out of your control. But the quality of relationship that you can attract absolutely is within your control because you focus your energy on attracting that. Ladies especially, attraction is one of your skills that you sometimes forget how to use. Let me come back to that. So selling out for love there are people I know not you but people I know who will do whatever it takes to be in relationship to do whatever it takes to attract love and be in relationship so they can feel safe and loved and cared for and um, coupled up if you want to call it that in fact for some people being single is a scary place to be and I've talked about that before separately but just a quick cliff note version being alone for some people is, is the worst thing in the world. They don't know how to be with themselves. Now, I would suggest that's the most important work to do, is learn how to be with yourself when you're not with somebody else. It makes you a much better partner for a start because <laughs> the trap of codependence rears his ugly head, and I'll get into that in a second too. But the paradigm we're talking about here is that we as individuated beings function well in relationships but also, which is not always talked about, function well as individuals. And it's the giving that up to be in relationship, giving up being single, being up, giving up being individual, giving up being alone, that some people think they have to give things up to do relationship, to be in relationship. And I'd like to counter saying that's not true. Yes, there are certain things you want to have space for. For example, if you're single, you have all the time in the world for yourself, basically. In a relationship, a large part of that time will be taken up by your partnership. That's something you have to give up, yes, understandably. But to give up certain hobbies, certain practices, certain food types, because this is one I've had to, I went through a long time ago, just realize it come back to me now. I was in a relationship with a woman who was vegetarian. And so my meat eating, now no judgments please about preferences of eating, I'm just letting them know my personal experience. But certain things I would eat that I liked eating, I had to give up doing whilst I was with her. And it was a price I paid because of that. And to be honest, 
because I do have a fairly flexible eating style, I like lots of things, I'm not strict on my diet in that sense, being with somebody who's very rigid in their dietary structure can be very challenging for me. Maybe not for you, but for me. So to give up my eating preferences, for want of a better word, is something I'm not choosing to do anymore in relationship. I've, I've been on my own long enough to find what I like that works. And yes, I can be with somebody who's, like, who's eating preferences, their dietary choices are slightly different from mine, but it's not gonna change mine that much. So just, just sort of wanna give that as an inclusive piece because that's a very simple example. <laughs> But I want to make sure you had that understanding because it's that sort of spectrum we play on. In relationship, it is so tempting to say, I'm so willing to be in that relationship, I'll give up all my bad habits and I'll give more of your good habits. It's not always required. But the thing is, we think we should because some rule book that's out there, which doesn't exist actually, says we should give up things to be in a relationship. So that's one piece I want to talk about where I've given you some framework on and a really clear statement about, no, you don't have to do that. But the other piece about it is when you're in a relationship, and this is one of the things we fall into as a trap. When we're in a relationship, it's sometimes easy, if you're the receiver energetically, to give up certain things to accommodate your partner. It's also easy sometimes when you're the protagonist in a way to have your partner give up things for you. I'm a, I'm a, um, how do I say this? I'm a, propo I'm a proponent of only giving up things that you really choose to give up, not because they force you to. There are certain things, for example, I mean, just throw silly ones out there just to give you some a spectrum, because there's a lot of things beyond this, but short ones. Is there are definitely things where you can give up um, the way you put the tooth toothpaste cap back on the tooth or not, where your partner has something different. There's some, there's some um, common ground you've got to work on. Where, for example, if your partner never puts the cap on, you always do, and you get upset with them for doing that, find a common ground. Maybe you have two separate toothpastes, or you say, from now on, we'll do it with this way or that way, whichever way it works. Um, same thing in the, so, to my bathroom is about which way around the toilet paper roll goes, and there's a whole debate about that one, and <laughs> I'm not saying which is right, but coming to agreement is so much easier, because if you start having, a, uh, having uh, upset, frustration, uh, burst, uh, um, frustrated feelings about your partner because of something simple in the bathroom, you got work to do. So that's, that's, a, that's one piece of it. But it can extend to other things too. Maybe, for example, um, you want to get up at six in the morning every morning to meditate for 15 minutes or an hour or something like that before you do anything else. And your partner doesn't want to do that. Is that okay that you have the different choice? Because some people, you must do everything together. That's the rules. Not necessarily. So giving yourself the freedom to do things that are different is a vital part of a healthy relationship. Having your own separate time is a big piece, by the way, because if you get up having your friends, and this is a big one, it's actually a chapter in my first book. Um, if you give up your friends for your relationship, you're making a bad choice. Now, qualify that. If you think that people aren't good for you and your relationship partner shows you that and you choose to step out of that, that those relationships, that's different. But if you hang out with your best friends you've known for 25 years and they love you and you're really caring for each other and you support each other, and your partnership, your partner doesn't want that to happen for you, you may have a, may have a challenge to work out there. I would firmly recommend that you do some communication to say, no, I'm not giving that up. And if they have a problem with that, that may be the end of the relationship. Yes, even that strong. So there's a lot of things in that spectrum from toothpaste caps to friendships <laughs> and a lot of stuff in between that can be <sighs> impacted by your relationship. And I'm suggesting to you, not saying there's a rule for this because there are no rules, but as an invitation or suggestion is to look at your relationship choices and seeing what you choose to give up and what you choose not to. And are those things big or small? Because if you're selling out your important things for the relationship, if that relationship ends, those things you sold out may not come back to you again. For example, if you get into a relationship for five, six years with a, with a partner who doesn't want you to be around your friends, your friends are going to disappear. After five years, you come back to them, they're going to know what hell happened. Frankly, when you're in a relationship, it's good to have friends you can check out on, rely on, and go to when you need them. So there's a spectrum in here, a range in here. I want to make sure you understand that. So relationships are powerful, great places to grow, and can push your buttons on all sorts of levels. But if you've got to sell out who you are to be in that relationship, you may have made the bad choice. Codependence, I mentioned that at the beginning. Let me drag that back in for a second. I've done some deep talks about this, so no need to recover it really here. But here's the thing. 
If you're not able to be yourself in the relationship you're in, I would strongly suggest you get out of that relationship. That simple. If your partner's making you do things, putting you in situations, but making you um, adjust to certain ways of doing things that aren't of your preference, that are not growth oriented, because there's also the growth orientation piece that comes up, you may be looking at a codependent paradigm. If you find yourself in a place where the other person cannot survive without you for two minutes, you might want to walk away. If you can't survive for two minutes without them, you might want to get some help. Just give me some spectrum range here. Um, there was a piece in that I just saw it go by and I think it left. So the paradigm of relationship, oh yes, yeah, the growth orientation piece, that was the piece. If you're in a relationship and your partner expects you, expects you, no, not expect, invites you to do things that are a bit outside your comfort zone, that's something to be played with. That's not like an against, it's like no way of doing that. It's more about if you get into relationships where things really are challenging to you, where the partnership demands things of you that are not appropriate. That's a different framework. So I want to make sure you've got this understanding because codependence is one of these um, invasive, not invasive, wrong word, but it's certainly an, an um, oh, there's a word for this that just fits perfectly and it just went out of my head. <laughs> codependence is one of these um, insidious, that's the word, thank you, and it's in there somewhere, insidious parts of relationship that many people don't realize they're in the middle of. And if you're having challenges with the codependence, I highly recommend you get some help to get that fixed and resolved. If you're in a relationship, if you're out of one, that's the best time to work on it. A book I highly recommend that I read years ago, which I love dearly, by Gay and Katie Hendricks, called Conscious Loving, is one of my favorite books on the area of codependence, one I, I transform my life with. And if you want help in that area, I do have offer that in my coaching. So I'll give you a link for a discovery session at the end so you can sign up for that if you want to. So selling yourself out in a relationship, or I should say selling yourself out to be in a relationship, is something I don't recommend. And if you listen to what I've said, I'll give you several points about why that doesn't work. So um, make sure I'm gonna wrap up because I need to get going. So again, quick recap. Um, tonight, if you're in LA, come join me at the Mystic Journey Bookstore in, in Venice on Abbott Kinney at 7 p.m. doing a book signing. Um, I'm one of the authors in the book and there's gonna be a four or five of the authors gonna be there plus some friends. We're have a fun time. So if you're in LA, come join us. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live and I do these talks to inspire and ideally educate you to have what you want in life, love and relationships. This is number 513, so there's a bunch more of these, so I'll tell you where to find those. Um, these are on my Facebook Lives initially, then go onto YouTube, then onto my podcast, so the links so you know where to go is my replays for this go on my business page. They're on my personal page too, but there's a lot more stuff on there. But my business page is pretty much all on my Facebook Lives, and you can find them from old, newest to oldest in sequence. So my business page is barryselby.author, please like that page. Secondly, um, my YouTube channel, you can watch them as well, is uh, the channel, all my social media is Barry Selby. So the channel is Barry Selby on YouTube. You can subscribe to Messages for the Masculine. Sorry, subscribe to my channel and Messages for the Masculine is this playlist we can watch all my videos there. And third, on my podcast, which, I'm, which I've launched and I'm growing more, in, growing more content in, if you go to iTunes and look for Messages for the Masculine, you can subscribe to that podcast. You can download all my talks in audio format there. Um, that I think is it. Um, I say I'm wrapping up because I've got to get going and get changed and get out of here. Um, maybe see you tonight at 8 7 p.m. in uh, Venice. If not, see you again tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow's broadcast. This, for those of you who watch broadcast, you know this is my 5 p.m. Pacific time broadcast. Tomorrow's going to be different because I'm going to be at an event all day and it may be later. I'm not sure. I will hopefully put some notifications on Facebook to let you know. So track me there. And tomorrow will be number 514. Topic I don't know yet. But I'm a big event tomorrow night, but tomorrow called the Wish Event, and I'll explain more about that tomorrow. Um, so it may be 5 p.m., but I'm not sure, so stay tuned. If you have questions about this broadcast or comments, please put them in the comments below after I sign off or respond. Thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.